you know, uh, about this time, um, we're going to be finishing up here the, um, uh, obviously, the motorsports update. In there, we usually kind of talk about um, what's happening with the Nissan Challenge Series because it's kind of grown on us. Um, and it's it's very important to us because it's a grassroots event. Um, and then we've got a lot of people that are really putting time, effort, and energy into this thing. Um, some really good friends of ours. And we've made really good friends with uh, the folks that are putting together this series. And we decided to invite them on our show um, to kind of talk about that. Um, so we are going to be bringing them on here momentarily. Um, yes. But uh, let's go ahead and why not bring on. Um, first off, I'll let you do this, Mike. So, all right, right. Like you, you did touch on it, Miles. Though I do want to say uh, it was really cool. Uh, we were going to be talking about Nissan Challenge, which is a racing series, a grassroots racing series out of Southern California. Uh, I thought it was really, really cool. At least for me, uh, how I got to know these guys and how we were able to make this interview possible. Which is, you know, we started to cover it not too long ago for the first time. And it's just coincidence that one of uh, one of the organizers uh, watched the show, and so we started making contact, and uh, that's where we get these nice shirts, uh, like the guys mentioned uh, in the comments. Uh, and uh, now we uh, we were able to set up this uh, this uh, interview, and uh, I think it's really a really good timing, honestly, because the first round of their 2023 season is happening about a month from now. So uh, we hope we can gather some interest for them and uh, it's not too late to uh, sign up, participate, spectate. Uh, so I think this is great, great timing though. Uh, yeah. If, if you're ready, Miles, we'll go ahead and bring on uh, our first guest. Here. Drop it, huh? All right. All right, guys. Uh, first off, we want to bring up uh, Edgar Furman. Uh, he is coming out of the, of course, Southern California area. Edgar, are you there? Hey, what's up? All right. <laughs> Welcome, 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 man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but first of all, I want to say thanks for the shirts. Uh, I uh, how, how's yours fit, Miles? You, you doing okay? Uh, you know, actually, this is a uh, this is it, it hugs the body really nicely. So <laughs> wherever you well, do I, purchase I, your shirts, I heard it was uh, the cheapest way to sponsor you guys. So <laughs> I you guys some shirts. we are we are a pretty cheap date. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so, uh, yeah we know, got we got uh, shirts and we got hoodies. Oh, nice. what's up? oh. I guess, Oh, I guess we have to wait well, till next year till the hoodies. All right. Yeah. Let's see how well, we got. That's, we, even that, got that's... we even got like their their iconic number. Oh, five twenty three. Oh man, <laughs> that, that's the carrot on the stick. You see, if we do yeah. a good job, maybe next year we can get it. Yeah, year, maybe, we'll maybe. Hoodies next year. <laughs> Ho hoodies are a staple of Southern California, from what I've. Noticed. Oh yeah, for sure. Like it's yeah. It yeah, could be yeah, sixty yeah. degrees, seventy degrees. Someone's gonna have a hoodie on. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> now speaking of like cold weather and just getting out of that. Now you actually. Um, uh, it went to Japan, uh, right? Yeah, you just yeah. got back. Like you're like jet yeah, lag yeah. still from that whole thing. So yeah, tell yeah, us yeah. about that. What's going on, man? You went so, to go uh, for what? We, uh, so I went with my girlfriend and we were there for maybe like 10 days. Uh, we made it just in time for the last day of Tokyo Auto Salon. So we were able to go to that like oh. mayhem that was there. And it was pretty sick seeing uh, like all the cars, all the projects, uh, a lot of Z influence everywhere with the new Z that's there. Nice. So, like, every major booth had a Z, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, everyone's developing parts for it. It is the new IT car, which is really cool to see with, like, Nissan making headlines again. They, they also had the Super GT cars out from, I mean, it was all over the place. Correct, so I yeah. Guess they, they usually they do. Several. But, but apparently yeah. this year it was, like, a lot of the cars. Yeah, they had, normal, so. they had them scattered throughout the show, too, which is pretty cool. It wasn't, they weren't just all collected in one spot. So, everywhere you went, there was a Z, which is pretty cool. How big is Tokyo Auto Salon? Because, I mean, you don't really get that. And, and I've never had an opportunity to go. But how spread out is the whole thing? It's spread out across eight halls. And, like, one major building and one side building. It took me probably, like, six hours to walk everything. And it, it wasn't even everything. <clears throat> Damn, so dude. That, 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 to me, that sounds... Okay, so have you been to SEMA? If you had to compare... Yeah, I've been to SEMA. SEMA. I guess it's like I, bigger, smaller. It feels bigger than SEMA. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because you got to, like, you actually have to exit a building to get to the next hall. To, like, get <laughs> oh. to the, the next area, yeah. You have to take a, a, a bus or a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, John, John yeah. apparently uh, may have uh, checked everything out or has... Uh, or uh, went and took part. But uh, the number of new Zs at Tokyo Auto Salon was crazy. Almost every Z at SEMA was a proto-spec. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
there is definitely a lot of Z presence everywhere. That's cool. Gotcha. Man. So, yeah. And then uh, we also we went to Fuji Speedway and it was cool because it was just like a regular like HBD event. But it was surprising to see how many like S chassis and Zs were on track that day, like compared to like some of the other cars over there. Because initially we saw like a lot of Porsches and then you'd see like, oh, there's an S chassis. There's another S chassis. Like in total, we saw like maybe seven S chassis between like S13, S14, S15. Um, probably like four uh, Zs, like uh, Z33 and Z34s, and like a few GTRs. So it's pretty cool seeing all the Nissans on track. There are like two Midnight Club members uh, out there chilling as well, which is like pretty insane to see in person. <laughs> oh, I bet. Those, uh, those veterans, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome, so it was, it was it was a pretty good trip. So, um, so you you said that you uh, you obviously noticed the new Z's. Now you're a bit of an old uh, an older vintage Z owner. Yeah. yeah what yeah. are you rocking? Uh, I drive and race a Z32, uh, two plus two. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, My I've man. had a Z for about oh man, fifteen years now. Oh, good job. So, and yeah. and I'm on my third. I'm on my third Z now. So, like, a pretty well Prove versed. It. In Show your hands. Yeah. Show your... Oh man, I got I got all these cars <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely uh, bled a lot with these cars. Oh yeah. yeah, same here. Same here, man. Yeah, they take yeah. it in flesh for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, just yeah. with the space. So that's very cool, man. Uh, it sounds like you had a great trip. Got you on with us here. Um, yeah. now yeah. you actually have a counterpart. Um, that's uh, sitting in our green right now. Green room right now. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and bring him on. Uh, John Capati. John, you there. Hey, hey how's it going, guys? Yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Not a yeah. problem at all, man. Thanks for making the time. Of course. I know Anytime. you guys. Are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, uh, we did have a moment to speak with you guys earlier mm -hmm. this week, kind of preparing for this thing. We got to know a lot about you guys, man. Uh, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it seems so, um, it was it was so easy to to talk with you like right off the bat because I mean first of all we got something we're always talking about Nissan is just yeah. a common thread but um, I think we were talking about how you guys how you and Edgar uh, met and then started to kind of uh -huh. gain this uh, this this series and, and form it though uh, how did you guys y'all want to share yeah uh, well you guys yeah so got into like cars and like my first car that I started fixing up was like a 240SX moved to like orange county and i didn't know anybody at the time so like try to start a little 240 meet so that took some energy to get started and then you know eventually that's how i met edgar edgar was like the crazy guy that was like doing all the canyon runs that also was like wow man you go to the canyons that was pretty crazy so started hanging out had like a wednesday meet that like you know been going on for like a decade plus mm -hmm. and then from there just hanging out doing cars i think i took edgar to buy his first z32 yeah yeah Probably like a really? pretty funny, yeah. Yeah, yeah this like to go of the night, an like, hour away to look at a car, and yeah. he's the one that yeah. drove me because my my two forty had just been totaled, so I didn't yeah. have a car. So he he gave me a ride to check this car out an hour yeah. away, yeah. and yeah, that was yeah. the first Z I bought back in 07. 07. Yeah. You can you can always count on friends to help you make uh, financial mistakes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I met all like a lot of my friends, like just starting that two forty meet. Wow, so, man! So you guys met, and then when did you come to the realization that, man, we need to put something together for an actual track day and start to develop something like that? Like, how did that start to develop? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so, yeah. How, how much time yeah. did it take from the time you guys started to or first met to? The, the ideas brewing was it I one guess. of those you're wrenching it's like you know what we should do we Light should bulb. make our own racing series <laughs> oh. mm, well, something like that actually yeah we all started kind of tracking together like just as friends uh we met our friend steve who owns corner through garage and you know he was a 240 guy original owner of a 95 and he was like oh yeah i guys should like go to the track so he kind of got us into track and you know kind of helped us through it so it was pretty fun, just like all of us running together. And most of us were 240 guys. I think at one point we all had 240s, about a good handful. And we were the only 240s running out there on track because most of the 240s were either drifting or it was kind of like when the scene was still new. So like 240s weren't really like picking up steam yet. Okay. So from there, like, you know, we had some ideas like, hey, it'd be kind of cool. Like, uh, you know, we could do this more often, like with more people. And then that kind of just like, faded into the background for a couple of years and then uh me and my old roommate mike 
he actually was working at Corner Three Motorsports, and he was like, you know what, you should start a racing series. And I was like, that's a pretty good idea. And from there, we just kind of grinded and grinded. The editor initially was, you know, not only my friend, but like one of the competitors. Yeah, you didn't beat him in series before. Yeah. Uh. So then from there, you know, like it became a one man show at some point. And then Edgar came along. I was like, hey, man, let's let me help out. Let's, you know, let's see what we could do. So from yeah, there, so we have a going. we have a group of four guys. It's John, me, uh, our buddy Kenny and our other friend Bache. It's a kind of like a, a group of, of us four who kind of run the series. Uh, do the day to day stuff and you know uh, the day of the event as well. Yeah, you're the guild that puts it makes yeah. it happen. So the, the yeah, Mount yeah. Rushmore of Nissan Challenge. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. there's been a lot of guys who really like have helped Nissan Challenge throughout the years. So definitely, like, there's been like more than just us four that kind of put it all sure, together. Yeah. It's just been like a yeah. big group effort. Yeah, yeah, it's been a massive group effort. So I let's know. talk a little bit about that. So now this event has kind of developed you know mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about well, what the description is um well, now well, mike yeah. actually had a really good we, you know us talking in the background mike kind of put together a description and i, I mean tell us uh, mike had it and i was like yeah. i just want to make sure that that sounds true to what the event is yeah but, yeah I, I i what i was trying to do and i was telling the guys earlier uh, is uh for those who aren't familiar with what Nissan Challenge is, I kind of wanted to come up with a, just a general paragraph. So you kind of, for those listening and watching with us, they understand what we're talking about here. So if that's cool with you guys, I'll go ahead and yeah. give it the spiel here, uh, which is uh, the Nissan Challenge is a grassroots racing series located in Southern California. It's organized by Nissan enthusiasts uh, to provide accessible track day competition uh, exclusively for cars manufactured by Nissan. Uh, uh, you, you guys uh, encourage drivers to, uh, at any stage, to uh, attend, participate, and develop their driving skills. And it, overall, it's meant to uh, for people to have fun, you know, make yeah. friends, and then build the local Nissan community. And, uh, yeah, I figured that'd be just a nice preface for what – what you guys are about anyway yeah definitely pretty on point yeah it's about growing motorsports like you know getting guys out to the track helping them out and just making it really accessible that's been the major goal being making it accessible and like you know helping people grow within it oh all right. yeah grow with it that's a big one yeah, for so sure. let, yeah. let's talk about the early days like the, mm -hmm. the salad days if you will so like mm -hmm. uh 2015 um uh let's see how um so who are the original founders? Was it solely yourself or was it the four? Um, it was uh, actually me, me and Mike. Yeah. Mike True. So we were like initially the first ones. And mm -hmm. first year was a grind. It was a grind. Like literally showing up to the track, maybe having no competitors, one competitor. And from there, it was just like keeping, keeping at it. You know, kind of like digs at your soul, like trying to get guys out to the track and like not really having anyone show up. Wow. And then eventually like, Gain some momentum, like once we got like, you know, it's more people on board. Like Edgar definitely, like you know, helped push it along. And now we just kind of like see the synergy going, where we're getting a lot of drivers. It's very organic. Most of the drivers are like, you know, bringing in other people. And uh, yeah, been going so from this there. Was, this is around what, like 2015. I mean, what was the car scene like around that time in South Carol uh, South California? Mm, car scene was like really there wasn't. There was like a lot of like. Drifting was starting to pick up. It was just a lot of like car meets and car shows. Um, okay. There wasn't really like a motorsport presence for Nissans. If there was, they were kind of just like speckled around. But, you know, seeing like uh, when Time Attack was like, really starting to build up, like for the Nissans, there wasn't really much representation. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you'd have Redline. The Redline was the biggest thing back then. And you would notice that not many Redline Nissans were really part. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we noticed that, like, you know, not too many Nissans were participating. And, you know, this is before I got involved with the, with the series, you know, it was when I was look, looking to compete uh, and, you know, drive. Um, these guys made a home for, you know, the Nissan enthusiasts to kind of cultivate uh, Nissan drivers and Nissan cars so that they could, you know, be more, uh, I guess. Competitive? Yeah, more competitive and also more desired because yeah. most of the time, like, you say, oh, I'm going to go race. Like, most people didn't say, like, oh, okay, I'm going to take my Z. Like, it'd be like S2000, yeah. be Civic Integra or something like that. Um, yeah. So it wasn't everyone's first choice 
to go race a Z. And it was something that, you know, John and Mike early on wanted to cultivate, you know, like, oh, let's change people's minds about the S chassis. It's not just a drift car. You know, if you put your work into it and and all that, you can make it a very, very competitive uh, grip car. You you bring up two things, and it, and it makes me think about that too. One is you mentioned, of course, yeah, the idea of 240SX and track car. You know, by and large, the 240Z, I think you mentioned it, where a lot of people consider it as solely just a drift car, and that's not true. They, from, from what you're saying, and they make quite good track cars, uh, it sounds like, right? Yeah. Um, the other yeah, thing I mean, is, the Hunkook the SSC used to have the track record of one of the local tracks. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's like the epitome of S-Chassis, and it held it for like a, a good amount of time. I mean, you know, yeah. the platform itself, I mean, we're talking S-Chassis. I mean, it, it's lightweight. It's spirited. You know, it, it's it's torquey, I mean, for the most yeah. part. I mean, you, you got everything. that you It handles like it's on rails for the most part mm-hmm. with minimal adjustment. I mean, yeah. it, it's, you know, it, it's a little rocket in a box, you know, it's yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. And I, I own one for a hot minute, and it was – it, it impressed me for what it was, you know, so. Yeah, I, I think S chassis kind of have that high ceiling that they can get to, like compared to a lot of the Nissan chassis. So it's just that, you know, in America, we really haven't got there yet with the S chassis. Well, yeah. for the price tag on them nowadays, you may not. Uh, it might not happen. <laughs> it might not happen. There, there was a point where, um, you know, initially like uh, one of the committees like that we have for rules, that there are a bunch of Z drivers yeah. And when we were trying to, like, make rules for the 240, they were just, like, kind of laughing it off. It's like, oh, we don't have to worry about 240s. Give them whatever they want. And then uh, once we started kind of, like, you know, taking one out, like, with the stock KA, they started asking, like, hey, man, how do I get a 240? Like, where can I pick one up? Like, how do I buy one? And then eventually it was just like, why are they so expensive? And I was like, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so you're starting this event. Like, you obviously want to get them out there. And this is, I mean, we'll just call it what it is. It's a, it's a huge passion project for you. And obviously, you guys exactly. have the love for the chassis and, and really for the brand as a whole. Yeah. So yeah. it started like that. So you're 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 kind of making your way in this. Now, we're, mm-hmm. we're talking about maybe the first season. So, yeah. you know, what was the first season like? Like, how, you know, were you just... Yeah. Try, just get it started and then let's just make it to the end and let's make something from it. So uh, l- yeah. talk a little bit about that first season. So first season, uh, we kind of tied on with some track organizers and it was just kind of like, Hey man, like we want to start like a Nissan challenge series. So we kind of put like a rough rule set out there mm-hmm. and we just started like, you know, kind of like listing out certain events that we were planning to do. And then from there we just went to each event and then just kind of like picked up guys that were there um, okay. we had like one strong driver that always came out, Nazar, he was always there. So that was like, you know, big props to him. Like that guy was dedicated. Um, but yeah, like we would have events where it was just me and Nazar, Mike, maybe just me and Mike, maybe some G35 guy that we picked up in the crowd and it was just grinding through. Like, you know, like it definitely kind of eats at your soul trying to get like Nissan guys out there. And like some people are like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And, you know, like going out to the track and it's like, oh kind of crickets in the beginning so <laughs> that was first season yeah. i i can imagine too mm-hmm. the type of challenges or yeah. obstacles that you guys had too because i mean i'm just thinking about it even for me mm-hmm. which is if it it sounds like just the growth that you guys eventually are having yeah. uh is was a, through word of mouth mm-hmm. you know that that yeah. hey we found you hey let's you know come mm-hmm. again but also, yeah. I mean, track days aren't the cheapest event to, to get into. Yeah. I mean, what, what's a typical yeah. track day uh, go for in, in Southern California? So normally, uh, so the smaller track is usually like maybe like 180 for the day. Uh, some of the bigger tracks uh, can get up to like 250, 260. Um, and then you got to add on like the gas you spend. Uh, if you're going to stay overnight because the drive is like a two and a half hour drive. Some guys go the morning before. Or some guys uh, stay the night and, you know, go home the night after. So you got to take that into account. All your expendables, tires, oil changes, if anything breaks, if you break on track, you got to get towed. So it, yeah. it can get pretty expensive. You know, we try our best to make it as accessible and affordable to the guys. Yeah. Because uh, we don't we don't charge extra for them to, you know, race. They just got to sign up and that's it. There's no extra charge. Uh, John does his best to, like, help, help hook up the drivers with, like, parts if they need anything. Um because we do have like contingency programs through through the series to help help our drivers out. 
Um, and as you know, we're always available for them for information. Other drivers are available available for them for information. Honestly, our drivers make our series. They they are the ones that help bring in other drivers too, because you know they they love driving with other people. You know they don't want to be the only one on track. Yeah. Did I hear your? What was your magic trick to to gain? momentum Drive. to to increase the number of people and it, it sounds like i mean obviously you built up the brand but yeah. was there any like little it, uh, tricks that you were doing at that time you know what honestly it was kind of like tips like breaking down the wall of excuses like a lot of times like when you have people <laughs> not, you know going to the track there's always like something that's going to come up like oh hey i need to do this to my car i need to do that to my car like everyone thinks like there's this like high list that you need to do before you even get onto the track and First attack was basically like bringing out like stock cars and showing people like what they can do. So like bring out an old stock S chassis and everyone's like, wait, you're bringing like a stock S chassis out. It's like, yeah, we're bringing out a stock S chassis and they start seeing what it's doing. Then you start seeing a lot of Z guys. I'm like, Hey man, who cares if you're like four by four, like, you know, just come on out. We had um, our buddy Perrin, he was driving a G35 uh, coupe and he had stock suspension. He was like one of the other hardcore drivers in the beginning. And he was just like out there. It was automatic. You could just see this car like just like squatting through the turns, like, you know, putting it down. And (laughs) after that, a lot of people were just kind of like, hey, man, like, uh, yeah, I can't really say I have an excuse at this point. So that was one big thing, breaking down that wall. That's a good point too, man. Yeah, you can just get them out there too. And I imagine, yeah, it once you get the bug – you oh. can't shake it loose, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. It just takes one event. Yeah. One event. You could Dang. tell, like, you'll see guys one day out, and they're just like, oh, man. And then the other thing is, like, that first day out, everything that they think about, like, you know, buying, modding the car, it all just changes. Like, everything changes. You're like, wow, like, my list has just, like, been consolidated. Or, like, you know, my goals or, like, what I'm trying to aim for has just totally changed from what I was looking at before. Well, you so know, we talked change. about it yeah. before, how people get lost in their builds. Like, I have to get the right seats, and I have to get the right yeah. that. But the reality yeah. is, I mean, after mm-hmm. we talked, I mean, you guys have really developed a system of, like, wins for pretty much every chassis that's had an opportunity to compete in the series. So you know yeah. exactly what it kind of takes to really start mm-hmm. showing competency in their yeah. driving, and then, of course, uh, mm-hmm. increasing all the – the details in the vehicle to really kind of yeah. gain speed to get you the traction that you're looking for to, yeah. to get you where you want. And that's to me, one of the hugest selling points of this series. I mean, Absolutely. where else are you going to get a knowledge base like that? It just yeah. doesn't exist. You know? Yeah. We've, we've had so many cars and drivers come through. Like we have a pretty good baseline for most of the cars that, you know, people pick to drive with. So, and that's just open information that we share, you know, we share it, the drivers share it. You know, like an easy baseline for everyone just like, and it's like a short list of stuff to have that baseline so they can just, you know, go have fun and start learning. Yeah. You know, we have, we make sure people like change their mindset from like, oh, I need to buy all these things to get the car ready. If you're in that mindset, you're never going to be ready. You know, you just, you just need to get on track. And at that point, they'll see that like, okay, it's better I invest in myself than in the car so that I can start improving and bringing down my track time. And, and I think you mentioned it too, where like, yes, it, it, that list of parts that somebody might want, you know, yeah. it, after a track day, that list, not only does it change, but it goes from theoretical to literally this gut feeling where you can literally prove to yourself why yeah. you need those parts more than just the once. You're like, no, if I want to be faster, I know, you know, based on information from other people or even just an intuition that they get while yeah. driving the car, they're like, no, I actually need this first, not that, you know, yeah. as one thing. So I think the track day – is a real proving ground to really uh, uh, be the ultimate truth as far as what parts you actually need. So you guys are, you guys are starting to develop everything. You know, you it's 2015 from starters. You're, you're moving, you're motivating everybody to kind of get on track and you're starting to build these huge data sheets to kind of get people up to, up to speed as quickly as possible and Mm -hmm. improving drivers. And this is about 2020. And then of course, we're about to get hit with something big, but before then, yeah. before we take on the next uh, section, um, let's go ahead and check some comments. So some folks have actually commented on you. We've got um, some good comments, yeah. Uh, 
But now Haley actually dropped in, said, any plans to come to Texas? We'll talk about that a little later. We'll probably table that here in just a little bit. Yeah. Um, we'll put a pin I, in that. Yeah, yeah. We're going to yeah. put a pin in that. Um, ben, just saying hi. Thanks for coming on with us. Uh, I would love to see Nissan Challenge Series come to the East Coast. Again, another yeah. pin. We'll put that in there because we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. But yeah. uh, uh, let's see here. Chris, come on. So true. Um, uh, once you improve as a driver, you just focus on parts you need, uh, like better tires and brakes. Yeah. 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 Very, very cool. Uh, Jamie also came in and said, my first Nissan was a 95 Red 240SX. Uh, then the obsession started just like the rest of us. Yeah, so Just, just like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, nice. yeah, let's go a little bit back to your story. Now, again, uh, 2015 is a starter. You're working mm -hmm. through your gears. You're developing everything, and um, you're putting all the love into this and, and mm -hmm. watching this thing grow. But yeah. we, you guys get hit with, with – something that's going to sweep your leg just like everybody else out there we get covid um that yeah. kind of comes through now how detrimental was covid to you guys in trying to develop this event and all these drivers um, at that time period you know so, it, it really did take down a lot of momentum yeah yeah i'd did. say like uh moving up until like 2020 we had a lot of growth because we had a lot of uh there was a lot of I guess change in mentality in our drivers because everyone was more focused on uh, taking instruction. You know, we had Stephen Doherty from, you know, the Nissan Academy. Uh, we built a relationship with him and he would fly in and, you know, he would instruct a lot of the guys who, you know, would reserve uh, seat time with them. So a you lot of the GT Stephen Doherty, uh, who won the GT Academy ch uh, yeah. championship, which is a feat on its own. He right. was actually taking the time to actually show up to your event and giving instructions to people. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yep. He, uh, people would reserve their time with him and, you know, he would fly out as long as he had enough people to fill his day, he would come out. And honestly, that was one of the biggest, you know, uh, assets to the series is the accessibility to Stephen Doherty to help improve. He's and it nice was guy like, too. that's so cool that he nice. got, uh, yeah. So we had a lot of the GTR guys like massively improve because they saw that, you know, their car was more than capable. They just weren't. So like yeah. <clears throat> they kind of opened their minds to this this thought like oh i'm not good enough yet like what do i need to improve with myself and Stephen doherty was the one that helped push that, uh push and break through that wall builder, a huge confidence yeah, builder yeah. when you got him riding shotgun yeah. or giving you some advice in the in the pits yeah. i mean come and on yeah i mean there he was took a lot john's f340 yeah. oh. oh go ahead yeah, john there's been, yeah there's a lot of work in the background with doherty too like basically as he instructed the, the drivers he also like drove their cars to kind of like, you know, give them a benchmark, kind of give some feedback. And, you know, from the feedback he would give me, that's where we would kind of like, you know, further optimize, like, you know, some settings, like, you know, create some new ideas about like, you know, setting up the car. And that really just kind of like pushed forward like a lot. Just having a driver like that consistent that could put like down these consistent lap times and, you know, we could like make changes and then he'll just kind of go over it, you know, give feedback and like on top of that, look at data. So a lot of, like, benefit has come out from, like, you know, having him, like, in terms of information about, like, setting up the cars, you know, getting things together or even having some stuff, stuff made. Stuff made, yeah, I think, really? Yeah. yeah, I think the biggest eye-opener, too, was uh, he he drove, like, John's S13, and this car is, like, over 300,000 miles, stock AA, and he was running faster than a lot of the, like, GTRs that were out there in that 240, and it's, yeah. like... How is this possible? You know, this car has like a third of the horsepower and it's running significantly faster than a lot of the cars that have like all this extra power. How? And that wow. really opened up everyone's eyes. It's like, okay, you know, like there's a lot more that's on the table that I need to figure yeah. out. And then, you know, that that's where Doherty came in to help them out and, yeah. you know, with instruction and, and, and data analysis and all that. So that really helped the series and also helps a lot of the drivers grow uh, and improve to where yes. now even some of those drivers are helping instruct some of the newer drivers now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nima I, actually commented real quick. She said, Stephen Doherty, uh, awesome dude. Um, so I don't, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if uh, they had an opportunity to actually get some time with him or just know him from experience, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, from my experience yeah. talking to him, you know, online and, and a couple other things. Um, yeah, I, I, can't, I you know, I've never personally had an opportunity to, 
to get that. But I mean, geez, that's a huge selling point for you guys. Yeah. At that yeah. yeah. I, it's not only, it's not only driver instruction, but it's car setup too. Like he would analyze the car just within like a session of driving. It's like, all right, we need to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. And you'd see instant results on like how the car would change and be that much faster. Yes. Yeah. Well, you, like, you mentioned on the spot changes. On the spot changes. Yeah. On the spot changes. Yeah. You, you mentioned, um, uh, you know, obviously you've, you've met essentially every participant that has ever come through the Nissan mm -hmm. challenge. And yeah. I bet you, you're mentioning here how you, you, not only do you see the car setups change and instant and sometimes instant improvement, but I'm mm -hmm. sure you've been able to see, uh, how you mentioned drivers evolve, uh, and improve oh. their skills over time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's probably like one of the biggest things. Like sometimes we have drivers and it was just like a wild show. Like you just have like these, like, 1300 horsepower like gtrs like you know like spinning all over the place or like you know these fully built z's just kind of like you know taking like an early sunday stroll some drivers who you know we were kind of like working with instructing you're like man this guy's just doing the same thing over and over again it's like almost like i'm not even getting through to him and suddenly like you get these breakthroughs and it kind of shows that like hey man if you're really serious about driving and you want to drive you can get there you know it's not like this inherent like a you know talent that you have is something that could be kind of taught in kind of bring it out of you, you yeah, yeah exactly i mean is there any particular story or or mm -hmm. person or driver that that you can recall like going from an absolute noob to one of these top drivers in in your in your eyes at all like to see that that mm -hmm. curve you know yeah we've had uh, a couple of drivers yeah, yeah I'd say here. one of the more, like, he's kind of really, like, known in the G37, G35 community. Uh, his name's Tom. Um, he came to us in a G37 sedan automatic, and he was always like, oh, what, what can I do to make the car faster? And we're like, you need to get a Z instead. Like, that's going to hold you back. <laughs> but yeah. he's like, no, he was he was stubborn, and he but he put the work in. You know, he kept minding the car, kept money, money into it. He, he kept driving and driving. Like, it's to the point where... We see him driving like almost every other every other weekend, so he's definitely putting in time. And now he's like racing in NASA and wheel to wheel and doing really really well with his G thirty seven sedan now. So yeah. doing like 25, 24, 25 hour endurance races with it and all that. So he's he's definitely been like one of the biggest like surprises to come out of the series. Um, we've also had uh, Stephen Chan. Uh, he's one of the guys that uh, Doherty personally instructed, and you know he. He won one of the what, GTA events, I think, at Long Beach, at the Long Beach Grand Prix yeah. with his uh, GTR. Yeah. So guys, like, really? they almost kind of graduate through the series. You know, they come through, <laughs> they, they they change their mindset, they get better, and then, you know, it, it's good seeing these guys still have success outside of the series doing bigger and better things. Yeah. They they earn their stripes <laughs> and then at the same time learn yeah. their true learn their potential enough to yeah. go into you said you said NASA spec uh, NASA uh, or like FC four yeah yeah like, yeah that's yeah that's a, and that's a the, huge jump I think the biggest thing too is like a lot of our drivers were like proving themselves in like you know GTA and like you know other time attack events like taking podium and you know did that kind of like legitimize the series that like hey if you're fast in Nissan Challenge you're going to be fast outside. So that really kind of like helped bring out some momentum and like bring some attention to the series as well. Yeah. And you I see bet. a year to year, like cars just getting faster and faster. Drivers is getting faster and yeah. faster, you know, before when cars were like, when Z's were kind of laughed at for being on track and just being smoked mm -hmm. by an S thousand with a filter, you know, now yeah. they're like competitive. <laughs> they're, 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 you know, on equal, it's an equal playing field now with, you know, how the cars are set up and how the drivers know how to drive the cars now. So it's it's really good to see that you know Nissans are are competitive. You had a really good story. Like all these guys could not break a time. For yeah, the right. Time. And then one guy did it, and then all of them just kind of learned to walk after that. Like past. Pretty them. much. <laughs> like once once that guy broke through, it's yeah. like okay, like it's doable. Like what, what can we do? And uh, I think it's one of... another one with Chuck Waller. I think that's when yeah. we first brought Doherty out, and he drove my S thirteen, and he came back. You know, after like going around track and the pit was just quiet like everyone was Everybody looking at the ground yeah the gtr guys were just kind of looking off to the side because you know we've been racing for a couple years now we all thought we knew what was up like we were like hey man we're good drivers like you know we know what to do we know like how to do it and all of a sudden doherty just comes out and he's just like nope 
You guys have no idea, oh, no idea whatsoever. Yeah. And um, it's, it's... the biggest thing is, you know, like I drove my car that day, and then he jumped in with me, and then um, he yeah. drove my he drove it, and I was like, he was running like twelve to thirteen seconds faster than me. And when I jumped in the car with him, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to see some magic. I'm going to see, like, you know, some fancy footwork, some, like, you know, crazy, like, crazy things going on. And it was just, like, smooth driving, just, like, clean, smooth driving. And it, it felt like my car was, like, like getting less beat up versus, like, yeah. when I was driving. I was just like, what? I was like, this is really counterintuitive to me. Like, why are you braking over here? Like, why are we coasting through this? It's like, we need to go, like, all gas or all brake. And then all of a sudden, that all went out the window. We had to like wipe the slate clean, like delete all our egos and like start as just like clean slate, fresh boards and then just go from there. Yeah. Wow. That, I think the biggest thing is like, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Yes, so exactly. like once you start seeing all these things, like, oh, I really don't know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, like I said, it, open, it opens people's minds up to like improving, you know, seeing like yeah. reprioritizing what they need to do. Like, oh, maybe I don't need this turbo kit for my car to be faster, yeah. you know? And, and again, it, it leads back to the whole, like, making motorsports accessible and affordable. You know, we make them see that you don't need to spend all this money to be faster. You just need to put in the work and, you know, be open to learning. Yeah. That's, that's a good yeah. attitude. You got to have that. Yeah. If, especially if you're trying to improve, you know, yeah, you got to have be open to, uh, to feedback. Uh, good, good point. Yeah. Don't, good be point. Your, don't be your own worst enemy. You know? yeah. yeah. Open your ears. Yeah. Honestly. A lot of it's just like a stepping stone because like, you know, a lot of people want to get into motorsports, but like they don't know how to do it or when they kind of look at it, it's like, it's intimidating. Like you're like, Oh, Hey, what do I do? It's like, I want to go NASA or SCCA. And like, you look at like what you have to build, what you have to set up. And it's a big commitment to like, you know, just come in fresh and like do this build. So like one of the big things about Nissan challenge is like, Hey, this is a good entry point, a good stepping stone, you know, get your feet wet, get started, start learning and, you know, just progress to that level. Instead of, you know, just jumping, like, feet in, like, head in first, and you're like, oh, I think I'm over my head right now, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a good way to get your feet wet, because it's, like, it's a low investment to start with, and then you see, like, do I really want to do this? Is mm -hmm. it something I really want to pursue? Do I want to, like, go deeper into this? And, you know, the yeah. way our classes are set up, we do allow them to, you know, get deeper and deeper into their car builds, and, you know, eventually have a fully spec out race car if they like, and move on to drive on other series if they like. That. That's true too. Um, and you said um, having somewhat of a formula for a successful car, no matter what chassis, it seems like you have a formula for, for a, a number of different chassis that you've experienced or, or seen along the way. And I'm assuming yeah. that that catalog of formulas, if you will, seems yeah. to get bigger and bigger. Um, yeah. We actually, uh, we actually had a comment here too from Raul, which was saying about, uh, first year is looking forward here in 2023, and he's got a Sentra. So I mean, oh, man. This, yeah, Sentra. yeah, you were looking forward to those guys. Man, yeah, excited for those guys. Yeah, because we, you know, up until now, we're thinking you know, rear wheel drive and all. That. This is all, no matter what car mm -hmm. it is, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive. Uh, you know, it's it's whatever you bring with you. It seems like yeah. you guys are there, there's no uh, limits to to what you guys can, uh, you know develop yeah. or get with the right. drivers and as long as it's a nissan infinity or dotson bring it you know we'll yeah. we, we have a home for you and we'll, we'll definitely you know do something for you accommodate so, yeah yeah that, well, that brings a, good, a little bit about that yeah go ahead mike yeah yeah that brings a good point uh you know if we've got a guy here like raul which is the first year guy mm -hmm. uh, i mean it, we were wondering what does a tr for those and for those who haven't done it what does a mm -hmm. normal track day look like i mean uh um it, it, what time are you getting in? What time do races start? What kind of experiences? Walk us uh, through the process. Walk us through, yeah. yeah. So right all down. that, all that, like, before even the track day, like, you, you got to sign up first. So uh, our host is uh, Speed Ventures. Um, so you go to their website, you sign up, you pick up the track the track uh, day, and then you click, you know, our Nissan Challenge box and click what class you're going to be in. Um, if you don't know, then you just leave a blank and, you know, we'll figure it out at the track. Um and then once you're all set to go, the day of the track, uh, usually you guys roll in around like six to seven because of the driver's meeting that's early on in the morning. Um, and then we kind of run our things independent, at least with Speed Ventures. Speed Ventures themselves have like a bunch of theories that they run alongside uh, with them. So we'll see like uh, a bunch of BMWs out there. We'll see like Corvettes out there, Miatas out there. And uh, Speed Ventures handles all of that. 
Um, but with Nissan Challenge, we kind of just take the burden and just handle all of that, like all of our, uh, like taking down times and sign ups and all that. So normally the morning of, like once they're settled in and once, uh, they've done their driver's meeting, we have them come to us at our booth or wherever we're set up, the garage, if we have garages on track, uh, they'll sign in with us, let us know a little bit, them, a little bit more about themselves, uh, what car they're driving. If they're brand new, we have them fill out like a tech sheet so we know how to class them. Um, if they're a returning driver, obviously, like, we, you know, we start developing relationships with all our drivers. Um, also, other drivers start with developing relationships with each other as well. Like, it's a pretty, pretty close-knit group. Yeah. Um, okay. And, you know, guys just go out and drive. Uh, Speed Adventures handles all of the logistics on track. Um, and we record everyone's best lap per session. And, you know, we record up to their first four sessions. Um, then from there, uh, we take the top three drivers, uh, hand out their awards. Uh, usually we like to acknowledge, you know, anyone who's improved a lot throughout the day as well, because that's, okay. that's just as important as winning, you know, making sure that you're improving throughout the day. Yeah. You know, we have guys that can improve five, 10 seconds throughout the day as, you know, they get feedback from other drivers or from us or whatever, if they have someone jump in with them. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much a typical day it's pretty pretty relaxed atmosphere um granted like there is competition but like everyone gets along pretty well everyone's willing to help yeah. each other you know yeah. someone someone you can walk to, up to a veteran driver's like hey you know like can you jump in the car with me or can i ride with you on a certain day or whatever certain session and yeah. most of the time like guys are just willing to just help you know everyone everyone gets better that way yeah like Fair the book. knowledge is the knowledge is communal <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of support, like, when you go out to a Nissan Challenge day. In fact, like, a lot of times, like, Nissan Challenge drivers will kind of, like, bring their friends along just so that way, like, you know, there's kind of, like, that base there. So a lot of times, like, with the new driver, you know, if anyone's kind of nervous or, like, you know, has any questions or, you know, any concerns about, like, you know, what they're doing or, you know, things that are going on with their car, like, a lot of times, like, we try to do our best to, like, offer, like, support on the side there. So that way, like, you know, any butterflies, any like thing that you're nervous about, like it's easy just to ask us questions, go over certain things like, hey, am I doing something right? Like, you know, I want to make sure like, you know, my etiquette's on point or, you know, like I'm kind of concerned about like, you know, something happening with my car or even when it comes to tire pressures, it's like, hey, you know, like what should I be doing? Like, you know, in between like these laps to really improve. It's like, well, you know, we could check your tire pressure. We could go through like, you know, some of these things or even it gets to the point where it's like, you know, some of the more senior drivers will even like offer like help where it's like, hey, you know, you want to ride along with me or, you know, maybe like, you know, I'll ride along with you, maybe do a couple laps, like, you know, kind of give you the gist of things. Yeah. And it's just really about like supporting the drivers there. So that way you just don't show up and you're like in this island and, you know, <laughs> everything's just happening around you and you're kind of just like, oh, man, I'm, I'm this is kind of like freaky. So I think. Once, like, most of the new drivers come along, they're kind of like, whoa, it's just kind of like a big kickback scene. Like, everyone's in the garage, like, you know, milling around. Like, there's some snacks. Like, people are talking about setups. Like, some of the drivers will even start sharing data and, like, overlaying it and being like, hey, man, I'm going faster here than you. Like, you know, but you're going faster over here than me. So let's kind of talk about this. And that's how it really starts working out. That share yeah. telemetry so, is, yeah, like, telemetry. unheard of. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah. talked a little offline, you know, about like little things and, and you brought up a bunch of good points, um, which we thought were important. Now I'm just going to lay out a couple of these things. Um, and these are notes that I took the other night. So buying parts uh, doesn't necessarily guarantee you'll be fast on the track. Correct. Um, and then of course you mentioned, um, you know, get a base with your car as is. It, it seemed like that was probably the most important. That's your, your entry level first days, like we just mentioned. Yeah. And um, yeah. I, you said something that I really loved and it said, grow with your mods. Yeah. That's and, uh, a big mistake I think people make. Cause I mean, again, I, I'm I, up in, especially my younger self, I was always about the build and the upgrades. You know, if you're doing this, you might as well buy this while you're at it, and et cetera. Exactly. But all of a sudden, you take a car that's completely stock into this, what you think is this, you know, epic build, but you didn't get the, you didn't get to experience each mod on its own mm -hmm. or, 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 you know, the behaviors. And I, I think that's a lost um, yeah. experience that it's worth of having, you know? Yeah. yeah. It goes back to the whole, like, you don't know what you don't know. Like, if you do all these things, you don't know what you did really you know just threw parts at it you know we had yeah. one of our competitors like he was a young guy he's still in high school it was a project with his dad brought out a bone stock s13 like all season tires dealies 
like full interior and everything. And throughout the years, it progressed from like being this K powered stock S13 to coilovers and wheels and tires, then getting swapped and getting caged. And you could see the progress in his driving ability because you saw the time drop. And that's like the the end all to everything is like yeah. your time doesn't lie. You know, if yes. your times are dropping, there's lie. improvement. Yeah, there's improvement. Yeah. And there's no way to like negate that. You know, that mm-hmm. that just proves everything. Like you said, it was a, it's like the track is improving grounds for what you're doing and how you're improving. Yeah. <clears throat> it's also there's a different approach to like, you know, like really working on like yourself as a driver. So a lot of times, like when it's called like growing with your mods, it's like not only do you want to be better at driving, but you also want to understand like what your car is doing. So like as you kind of like add things like, you know, in layers, you get an idea of like what's doing what. And a lot of times, like, we'll feedback with certain drivers about, like, what's going on with the car, how it's feeling. And, you know, them being under, being able to understand, like, their mods and, like, what they did, we could kind of, like, you know, rule it out. Like, hey, man, like, you know, let's adjust your sway bars over here. Or, you know, let's work on this a little bit more. And that's, like, the biggest difference with the series. It's just really, like, a very technical, like, almost like a racing school that's competing, <laughs> like, with each other. I so that's that. probably, like, the cool part of it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you, you know, you mentioned the track day experience too, and and obviously growing with mods and stuff like that. And I started thinking about it. You know, y'all are spending so much time on the track. What does this do for you guys off the track? I mean, do y'all end up first of all, like, do y'all all get dinner after a track day, or does this Usually. lead to like garage days and tech days? Uh, you know, outside. I the triggered track, a lot or? of tech days. Yeah, <laughs> we definitely see a lot of other people's cars, like on non-race days. Uh. There's definitely this uh, camaraderie outside of the, the track. Uh, guys are friends. You know, they become friends at the track and they do their thing off track. Uh, we do interact with a lot of the drivers, you know, outside of the track as well. Uh, a bunch of us will go out after the track day and go get dinner. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely a pretty good community that, you know, we have. And it's, 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 it's pretty cool. Like, it's, it's one of, the, like, I think the best things we have in our series is it's a very good community. You know, there's yeah. not too much uh, negativity in it. Yeah. yeah. And I can tell, I, I kind of get the feeling that it's, it's a tight knit community, especially for those that are, I mean, willing to put down the investment for the track day yeah. for the mods. If you're putting down that hard, I mean, that mm-hmm. is a special type of person that I imagine yeah. you'll see pretty often, I think, uh, and, and yeah. grow that relationship as the more they come exactly. out, you know, uh, by the way, I didn't mean to distract here. I'm going to run a, some of y'all's pictures in the background, uh, just to share with those that are watching with us, by the way. So, uh, yeah. but let's, yeah, uh, let's, let's go ahead so and let, keep on. Going. I, I did want to kind of talk a little bit about car classes. So <laughs> currently, um, what are the number of classes that you're running into today? Right now we have four classes. So um, each class is kind of like divided by chassis and like mods. So like say like a 240 with a stock KA without like any arrows and like, you know, a certain tire limit, they're going to be like in a class four and they'll run against like some NAZ 32s. And then uh, after that, we have class three, which is probably like, you know, one of our biggest classes, which is a lot of like, you know, kind of like street, street Zs. So it's like any 350Z, 370Z that's running, uh, you know, like NA, no arrow, like, you know, certain limits on tires, but like pretty open in terms of like suspension and, uh, you know, differentials, um, mainly just kind of like a cap on like, you know, not having like too many adjustments on the coilovers. But the whole goal was like, you know, when we're, since we're trying to like to appeal to a lot of like enthusiasts, we always kind of like want to see like what people like initially kind of like do to their cars. So that way there's not too much of like, you know, people jumping in with like, all these crazy things and like, you know, totally being out of class. So that's kind of like how some of the classing works. And then Edgar could go over some of the upper classes. Yeah. So uh, beyond that, so like our, our lower two classes, three and four are like, our, you could say they're our street classes. Um, you know, guys drive them to the track and drive them home type of deal, like still with interiors. Uh, class two is uh, more of our like race car setup where we give them a little bit more freedom with their tires. They get, you know, their chassis mounted splitters, their chassis mounted wings, um, our compounds, they get more, they're usually allowed to strip out their cars a little bit more. So it's almost approaching a spec class as to where, um, if they start approaching the limits of the class, like every car has like very, very similar mods. Um, uh, the Z's are still NA, uh, the turbo cars are still like stock turbo powered. 
and these guys they they're pretty quick on track uh and then uh usually our more experienced guys are in this class as well um and then class one is where most of it's like a pseudo unlimited class where we have most of our r35 gtr guys uh the higher horsepower uh turbo guys that go out any of the boosted z's uh would be in that class as well um okay. and they're allowed like uh, it, like i said it's like almost a an almost unlimited class Okay. And that would kind of cover like our four uh, main classes. Gotcha. Yeah. You, you mentioned a rule book earlier too. Did that rule book derive from any other series as a base, and then you <clears throat> grew off of that, or was it something that you kind of created from scratch? Or well, so uh, in 2017, we had like a massive uh, like rule book revision uh, that we put out. Uh, initially, we had three classes, and then from there we branched off a separate class and we ended up with four um and we tried to make it to where uh it overlapped a little bit with like the red line time attack which is pretty big uh back in that time oh. mm -hmm. so that cars can cross over between uh pretty easily so it wasn't to where like if they did anything for red line time attack it would like totally knock them out of something uncompetitive in our series and if uh anything they did in our series would knock them out of an uncompetitive class like in red line time attack so we kind of use that as a base, and as we get more and more data, we did specialize our rules specifically for Nissan. You made a good point there. You said the more data you get, like for example, you said if for any reason a Nissan car or Infinity car or Datsun car comes in, and maybe you can't define it within a certain class, you, you essentially let them go out to the first session or the first day and then based on the data, you can kind of figure out w what class they belong in. Is that is that fair? or? Yeah, that's pretty fair. We base uh, our, any rule changes on participation and data. Everything's always data. So, yeah, like, basically. we have a massive collection of, like, car mods and times. So we have a pretty good idea of, like, if we see a car and its mods, like, what its potential is on track normally. And our classes are pretty much set up to the max potential of these cars and what time we think they will be at. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Numbers don't lie. Like you said, yeah. Go, you yeah. Pay off stuff yeah. the data, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, so the, the, you've got your classes kind of established. Now, where ultimately is the, is the event kind of going down? I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm noticing three tracks, which is Willow Springs International, uh, not Streets, um, and then Chuck Walla Valley Raceway and Button Willow Raceway Park. Sure. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, we also do run streets, though. Streets. Oh, you run streets, streets as well. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We run all the tracks that we have down here. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, this one uh, is uh, Auto Club Studio as well, which was the NASCAR track, which is getting shut down this year. Oh, oh. wow. Are you guys getting yeah. an opportunity to get on it before it uh, shuts uh, down? Last hurrah? No. We, last year was our last major event we did there, and we tried to make a big deal out of it. So, uh, yeah, they're changing it into a uh, sprint track. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. Yeah, so we won't be able to run there anymore. You had a favorite? Yeah, what's a favorite for like the people for both of you guys for all you guys? Everyone's benchmark track is Button Willow. Yeah, Button Willow. Okay, yeah. okay. I, yeah. Is there a particular reason? Is there a particular thing about it that makes it the favorite? Or I think it's the consistency. Like Button Willow CW13 is kind of like you know the standard to kind of compare where you can actually look at other series, other cars, and kind of compare what they're doing and. Button Willow gives you like a good idea of where you would stand. Yeah, it's kind of like the scuba of SoCal, where like if you're sub <laughs> one minute at scuba, you're you've hit you you've broken through that barrier, right? Yeah. Whereas at Button Willow, that time is two minute. Two minute is that like barrier you want to break through to where like there's even a a, a sticker put out there like the sub oh, two yeah. club. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's cool. That is cool. Yeah. So it, yeah. it, uh, um, cool. I, I did want to mention uh, Warren actually chimed in. He goes, it looks like the lap record at Willow uh, in unlimited dates uh, back to 2016. Is this due to the rule change or did a, or did he read that incorrectly? Uh, unlimited class. So it's our fifth class, but it's not, not so many cars fit into that class. Uh, unlimited is like our least participated in uh, class just because it takes a lot to get into that class. Yeah. Um, and that's like full race car GTR, like stripped out carbon doors, like sun windows and all that. So, which is um, <laughs> that's Warren, which is yeah. like gnarly. <laughs> yeah. 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 So like yeah. those kind of cars don't really come too often just because most of our drivers are very much, uh, 
like your normal layman with their, you know, three cards that they come out with to the track and stuff. Well, you might have so, to start taking that into consideration because you guys are going to be growing. I mean, if you're it, you're you're continuing to grow, and then you know, being on, uh, being in uh, now and potentially in magazines and podcasts, if you will. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you have to uh, uh, you have to maybe think about. Yeah, you, you always have to look at for the future. Maybe something to consider. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I said, we we're always willing to do changes as long as like. We'll deal with the that numbers growth. and the data is there. Yeah. We'll deal with that yeah. growth when you get there. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It started as like a whole bunch of friends just wanted to run at the track and like, you know, really build motorsports and get more like cars like ours out there. And now we're kind of getting over here. So we're like, oh, hey, I, man. You got to start kind of looking at stuff. There was a, you mentioned there was a new track coming for 2023 in your area? Yeah. So uh, again, back to Button Willow. Uh, they're kind of doing the same thing that Willow Springs is doing, having multiple tracks on their compound. Uh, so uh button willow is building a, a track right next to their main track and it's been something we've been looking forward to for several years you know pre-covid like it was something that was going to be like in place and delay 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 and now we're looking like we finally have a possible uh opportunity okay. to run on there yeah. after summer yeah. yeah so we have our current schedule set um but once that track becomes available, we're totally redoing the second half of our schedule to include that new track. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, you know, I want to I, <laughs> I want to guys clarify on this one too because we we've talked about you guys obviously the experiencing that you've seen with your drivers and the the drivers uh, their cars and stuff. But you guys also drive in it as well, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, we we drive also, on track. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We sure definitely drive. We were we were all drivers first for sure. Yeah. We're good, all still good. drivers. Yeah, yeah. Make we don't sure necessarily yeah. compete, uh, just because it's like a bit of a conflict of interest type of thing. If we end up like nice. competing and taking serious points, uh, and we're the role makers, so yeah. um, good we try to we... keep that separate. Uh, the only thing we do kind of allow ourselves to do is uh, set down times to set records, just because you know time never lies. You know, there's no politics, there's no nothing when it comes to putting down a specific time. We, so we do. we do allow ourselves to take those records if we do put down the time for it. Yeah. But that's pretty much all we'll do. We won't like take any series points or podium positions or anything like that from from our drivers. That that's a cool thing too, because uh, I mean, uh, like for Miles and I, we did a car show uh, for a number of years, not a track day, but we did something similar where, <laughs> you know, as part of the car show. You know, we we weren't ever a finalist in the show. You know, because <laughs> as judges, we there's. I can see how easily people could think that there's a bias involved right. or right, right. Uh, also with like raffle prizes. We're like, we don't claim raffle prizes because right, right, right. for the same reasons. Exactly. So that's, I, I like the fact that you guys do that. That's, that's cool. Again, like I said, numbers don't lie. If there's a personal best or a track best or, a, you know, a, a series best. Take there's it, an man. integrity factor there. So I, yes, you know, exactly. So yeah. Exactly. I mean, not to brag. I got, I have two of the records in my Z. So <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to work something in like I'm trying to be the guy that's not running like you know problem the problem like with the drivers like you know kind of helping them out and, like actually get some seat time for myself that'd be yeah. probably my main goal for this year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, just wondering. So you know, the 2023 season is just getting started. I believe y'all's first mm -hmm. race is in the first round is in early February. Is correct? Yeah. The, yeah, I think it was the eleventh. I, I hope I yeah, February eleventh. My dates right. Okay. Yeah. I at mean, uh, street. at at streets of Willow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular about this season um, that makes it different than the others? Are there any new any news that's happened this since the last season at all, or or what, what's this season look like in in your opinion? Uh, I think the influx of the front wheel drive guys is uh, something to look forward to. We, we're definitely looking forward to them uh, coming and joining us, uh, seeing what they can do and you know, what we can do to accommodate them as well. I think that's, uh, fresh blood is always nice. Yeah. Okay. New energy bill is awesome too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Think... That'd be like one of the biggest things. That's and awesome. definitely like um, probably this season, you know, trying to get more like media out, like, you know, start sharing the series more, uh, you know, sometimes like we kind of get stuck in our own little world, like, you know, amongst those, all the drivers and us, um, that we forget to like, hey man, like, you know, we need to kind of like share this, grow it, because there's more than just, you know, us doing this. There's like a whole community of like Nissan enthusiasts that, you know, 
definitely would love to kind of like reach and tap into and, you know, let them know about it so they can have access as well. Yeah, I think the next biggest group we want to like really tap into are the new GTR guys, you know, with everyone importing R32s and R33s and soon the R34, like we do want to bring those guys in and, you know, like, hey, show off that GTR her- her- racing heritage on track. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a good uh, that sounds like a good uh, preview uh, for 2023. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to see a Z a Z DTR rivalry on track for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Are, are there any major rivalries like uh, currently at all? Uh, based on is there bad? I wouldn't say bad blood, but like friendly mm-hmm. rivalries. Uh, so our class three drivers kind of like share this friendly rivalry. They're always within like fractions of a second with each other. So definitely those guys, um, it's a friendly rivalry. Um, when any of the committee guys want to race on track, they're always like, we're always gunning for each other as well. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely. We're, we're very competitive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the drivers forgot that I used to like you know I started off like driving on track and now most of them are like wait you used to drive on track I'm like yeah man I drove before like you know this is what I used to do yeah, so yeah. I definitely be, have like you know some ground I need to gain back against Edgar like yeah, you know it has been yeah ah. yeah <laughs> and probably like, the worst part was uh you know like seasons ago like my 240 was actually like you know used by another driver to complete a season. And, like, you know, it's kind of weird, like, having your car, like, run these crazy times, and then all of a sudden you jump in, and it's like, why am I so slow? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. 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 So, things to work at. Gotcha. Yeah. I I wanted to do something, and for those, mm-hmm. who, for, for those of you that are online with us, we wanted to kind of open up a few questions from the audience. So, for those of you that are live with us uh, online, uh, Right in the comments section, we want to know if you've got a question for, for Edgar and for John. We'd or love about to share setting it with up them. your car or yeah. anything like that. These are the guys to ask right now. Like if you have some general questions or you're thinking about attending maybe a, a, an event in your area. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I would, did want to take it a little bit back. Um, Haley had a question. Um, mm-hmm. Now, do you have any plans to kind of come to Texas? And then um, I'm going to double double that with somebody else. I mm-hmm. uh, brought it up, said, I would love to see Nissan Challenge Series come to the East Coast. Now, mm-hmm. I, I put those on the back burner because we yes. talked a little bit about that. But right, right. And, uh, and bring yeah. that up. And, uh, yeah, go for it. So we are working with uh, Z Club of America to kind of expand our reach um, with uh, Jeff Will- uh, Willer. Um, and he has connections with uh, NASA, NASA Northeast, the president of the club is actually the NASA director out there. And they are going to be implementing uh, the Nissan Challenge uh, rules book into the NASA HPDE events out in the East Coast this year. Yeah. So nice. NASA North, Northeast is going to be running, you know, our framework of uh, mm-hmm. rules for Nissan with their HPDE events coming up uh, this season. Yeah, the goal is, you know, we would really, really like to see this, like, go nationwide, you know, maybe have something, like, every year where we all get together, like, you know, in some central location, and, you know, just have a big old uh, party battle. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I wish, uh, again, uh, similar to someone that, what had writ- written uh, in Texas, I mean, I think, oh, man, if I, I if I had, if there was something like this, you know, in the Southwest uh, or here in Texas, man, I'd be all over it. I think it would definitely got me, because track... I, I, for me, as as I've grown as an enthusiast, uh, I've I've been leaning more and more into time attack and track days, and um, I just haven't had a, I haven't given myself enough opportunities to do it. And I, I knew that if if there was something like Nissan Challenge in the Texas area, it would definitely got me into the into the seat sooner too. So uh, I hope you guys grow, and keep on, and continue to grow. You know, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we did have another definitely question. trying to expand their reach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I wish you know more power to you, man. We it, uh, as as we get going, we have some more questions here from the crowd. They're coming out. They're 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 growing by the minute here. Um, we had another question here. Um, what about uh track insurance? Is that a common thing for uh, enthusiasts to uh to 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 do to use or to have for a typical track it, day? It is a thing. Not a, not many of our competitors use it. Um. 
but it definitely exists. I know Haggerty is one of like the bigger uh, track insurers that is out here in SoCal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I don't have much experience with them, but I do know that it does exist, and some drivers uh, outside of our series do get uh, track insurance. Um, track insurance, yeah. 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 Uh, there, there yeah. are options where you could kind of buy like insurance per event, uh, you know, through some of like the insurance companies. So if it's something that, you know, you want to make sure that when you go out, you're fully covered, like there are options that you can pick up a coverage for that day or right. maybe kind of like work it into like some kind of like policy that you have with like some special like, you know, insurance provider. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and you mentioned track events typically, mm-hmm. at least in, in y'all's part of the country, they're a part mm-hmm. of the state being about 180 to 250, 260 range. I, right. I would imagine that's yeah. that's pretty fair. Honestly, you know, uh, it's cost effective, actually. Believe it or not, that's yeah. actually pretty good. Honestly, it was For crazy. California that... your chart rates. That's actually yeah. Uh... well, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I was always thinking about too, because we always think when a lot of us from you know we're outside the window looking in. You know, mm-hmm. we think of California, we think of high real estate prices, and of course, yeah. Things yeah. like entry fees for track days being uh, larger. Ungo- we figured normal, it would be ungodly, but, but it's actually not. Well, I guess pretty the, fair. It's probably yeah. the most expensive thing is going to be the gas, right? So. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the two more expensive tracks we do have, have here are up north. So Laguna Seca and uh, Sonoma, which are crazy facilities to begin with, uh, which is reflected by the price of entry. Um, like, say, an unlimited decibel event at Seca is like almost $500. Um, okay. And then Sonoma is probably around the same thing as well. But again, there are like top of the line facilities and iconic tracks. So they, they definitely call for those high prices, but most <laughs> of the other tracks we do run at, like they're a lot more reasonable. Um, what's great is one of the tracks we do run out a lot at Chukwala, they have cabins on site. Whoa. So yes. yeah. So, uh, the owner was pretty smart about it because the closest, uh, hotel is like 45 minutes away. Yeah. yeah so it's out in the middle of the desert and he has yeah. about uh maybe 30 ish cabins that's and nice. they're pretty nice that's... yeah they're pretty nice yeah. so nice. you know guys just like rent out their cabins we've had it to where like a bunch of us uh rent the cabins the night prior and kind of party well, well, of course <laughs> oh, of course man. that's what it's about i'm sure yeah, yeah. Just having a yeah. Night. We, we've had guys bring sim rigs to their cabins oh, and really? have like competition the night prior and then yeah. go racing for real on track the day the day after yeah yeah that's, that's another thing a lot of the drivers will do is actually like uh start little teams like in the sim racing leagues and like right. you know do 24-hour events so it's kind of funny because like you'll see a lot of like nc markings like you know in like a lot of the sim racing and i'm always like hey you guys are pretty good you guys are like always at the top i'm like Awesome. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so these guys will race those on track and off track and Tim. Yeah, those yeah. Nissan Challenge boys are killing it on the uh, – yeah. but it makes sense. I mean, you guys are carving your mm-hmm. – um, you know, they're cutting their teeth uh, in yeah. the real world on racing. And then when they get in the sim world, it just – it makes sense. You know, talking to guys like Stephen Doherty, that's right. exactly what makes sense. Yeah, he or, was a big uh, catalyst in that too. Yeah, Brian yeah. Heikotter, those guys. I mean, you talk to them and, like, they start off – in that mm-hmm. world and then have an opportunity to race virtually and it just it clicks and it makes sense which is why those guys are the champions that they are um yeah, so right. yeah uh, mm-hmm. moving on to the next question um bert wanted to ask uh will you guys actually be coming out and play with uh, any uh, play with everybody at zcon this year i mean it's so, in your, it's in your yeah. neighborhood yeah uh we actually do have a booth uh for zcon okay. um so we will be there uh, at the track. We are going to have a bunch of our drivers there as well. So we, we will have a presence there. Um, awesome. We're not necessarily yeah. working with them like uh, as a sponsor right now. Have a it's something there. we could try to work out, but uh, we will definitely have our drivers out there trying to show what they can do and represent, you know, uh, me on challenge. I'll be there. I'll be there I'll, racing my Z2. We'll be there too as well. Hell yeah. So yeah. yeah we're sure going to be there, man. We'll be dropping yeah. out. So. Represent. So we'll yeah. uh, I'll watch this a couple times and maybe I'll have a hoodie by then. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be sure to bring you a hoodie on that hundred degree weather day. You know, at the end of July, <laughs> yeah, the sure <laughs> I'm just like this hoodie's so so hot, but it looks so cool. So I'm going with that. Uh, Stig GTR says, "Come Dakota, come Dakota, come Dakota." One of these days, I guess you guys will make it. Yeah. Out there. 
If you're ever out in Texas, man, if you're ever curious about the Austin track, uh, that's kind of what we're, we're in the Austin area, San Antonio area. So um, if you ever need a place to crash, I'm sure a couch or whatever, we, I'm sure we, we've got a pretty good handle on, on a lot of the Z enthusiasts yeah. in the area. So we can definitely nice. set you up. You Code, coding is a goal. Out. It's a goal. Yeah. Well, you yeah. come out. It's, it's, not as, uh, it's not as intimidating as you would think. So. Yeah. Um, a few more. You guys are actually raking up the questions here. Uh, yeah. Chris Guzman. Yeah, bring him on. What yeah. would be uh, your first must do mod for an all stock car? What engine lubricant uh, you like to use the most? Like, do you have a specific brand? Uh, so, you know, like for oil, like I always have like a, my oil reps say, like, the only wrong oil is no oil, but like we. Use yeah. a lot of mold tool. We we'll use a lot of torque. I'm a mold tool guy myself. I hate to say yeah. it. I, I, yeah. One day we're going to get a sponsor that is not mold tool, and I'll be like, damn, I put my foot in my mouth. The <laughs> biggest thing that I'm going to tell drivers is like, if there's one thing that you're going to do to your car, is um, probably brake fluid and brake pads. That's right. really like the baseline. Just like, even if you have like, you know, good brake fluid, that's pretty important. If you're not really going to like, you know, focus on those things, like, you know, just have a good. You know, where's so all of like how your car's reacting? Yeah. And you're not burning, uh, yeah. You're not boiling, you're not, you're not boiling the fluid. Yeah. Off. That's, that's, <laughs> so. that's probably like one of the biggest things like we kind of like developed within the racing series is in the beginning, we were burning through brake pads, burning through rotors. And so, you know, we got to work with companies like uh, Endless and then uh, Race Technologies, which does Brembo like North America. Behind you. Like yeah. Endless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, it went from like, you know, GTR guys like, burning through pads like in one or two events to like almost like hitting eight events. A lot of the Z guys, wow. you know, burning through like three, like, you know, three events, like finishing seasons and going plus some. That's so, longevity in a pad. That's a good job. Yeah. yeah. I've, yeah. I've gone two seasons on my brake setup, like, yeah, without issues. Wow. Yeah. It's a, we've actually worked and developed some like, you know, big brake systems for like some of the Nissans. It's just that the pad program that we have has actually like, made it so like we don't need like bigger calipers oh, like a lot of times like you guys are rolling uh, like a higher uh like like we would say like back in the power stop days you roll the blacks and then you just puff them yeah. off at the end of the day but uh, oh man stuff. yeah it, it's a whole different world like literally it's a whole different world i haven't messed with any of the endless stuff but i've always mm -hmm. been curious about it. i heard it was like yeah endless. so and <laughs> like just a quick history with endless is like they are one of the most winning friction companies in the world it's just that their presence really isn't in the U.S. Like most of the cars that are doing like, you know, 24 hours of Le Mans, like they're literally running endless pads. They're one of the few companies to do like 24 hours, one pad, one rotor. I think Doherty has a really good story because he only knew endless like as an enthusiast company. So when he started driving with Nissan and they're pushing out carts of endless pads, he's all like, hey, <laughs> endless. He's all like, aren't those like tuner pads? And the guy was just looked at him like, what? Are you? What are you talking about? So yeah, <laughs> right. company. they're they're also an F one. So like, yeah. yeah, they are a pretty big company and, and yeah. definitely All right. so a supporter of the ask, series. So where does a yeah. guy Good get point. endless pads from these days? Um, John, we. I was yeah. gonna say, I was like, I feel like John was like setting himself up to push yeah. it. But I, but yeah. I will say though, I I've heard that pretty well. Like like no BS aside, I've heard that it's a pretty significant pad. So it. It's a pretty crazy brand. So once you actually get to know it, it's hard to look away. You'll see like almost every WRC car like running endless pads. It's just that no one gets a discount. No one gets a sponsor because they're that good. But if you start digging through like most of like, you know, race calipers, you'll see like this blue brake pad and that's an endless. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, a few more questions that's here good. now. Uh, you know, I'll just mention here. Uh, Warren, who uh, he, he's an avid racer, said brakes are worth one thousand horsepower. It's like, all right, well, but but I will. Brakes will keep you on track. Yeah, brakes will keep you on track. You know, we'll got to go from there. So, um, a few more things, um, and we'll we'll sidestep here a little bit. Uh, Ali uh, Filetto, um is on with us, and he said, uh, here with uh, front wheel drive SR twenty, it's stock boosted. I am learning. I am leaning towards uh, class four rules, but it's boosted. Um, would I get ruled out for it being boosted? Uh, me and my car aren't very fast. So uh, I'll I'll take this one. Um, yeah, anything boosted automatically takes out of uh, class four, just because class four is NA all, all NA. Mm -hmm. So uh, and those NA guys are like 120 horsepower, uh, or if you're Z32, it's like 180 horsepower with a 3,400 pound car. 
Yeah. So uh, anything boosted is automatically class three, where you're running with like the NA, the like the VQ guys, the NA VQ guys. Um, mostly because the potential of that turbo setup is competitive with everything else that's in that class. So uh, we always set our rules for the car, not the driver, so that hopefully the driver can progress and become faster and be more competitive within that class. Okay. Yeah, so all our rules are always based around the car, not the driver, because that way it allows the driver to grow within that class and you know come up to speed with everyone else. Yeah. So it's always our intention for anyone new um, to just come out, drive, uh, see where they're lacking if they're lacking in anything, and see where they can improve, and you know slowly make your way up to be competitive with everyone else. You know, we we definitely do everything we can to make sure that all the drivers progress and learn and become faster. You know. As long as you're faster by the end of the day, we've done our job. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a pretty fair, I think it's a pretty good thing to note for anybody who's new is that it's not a, an overnight success. This is where yeah. Yeah, you're going to put some time in and it's going to take – you'll see progress, but to be at your pinnacle, it's going to take, I would imagine, you know, even years to, to really – it's an ongoing quest, I imagine, yeah. to keep going. There's, yeah. there's, there's no limits. You can just keep on going at the, with the more dedication yeah. and money. <laughs> yeah, right, right. As, as much as we are like a comp, oh, sorry. Uh, as long as, as much as we are like a competitive series, like yeah, it's definitely like John said earlier, like a racing school. <laughs> you know, you you come to improve. That is our 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 bread and butter, our core. You know, driver improvement. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so one big thing. Uh, yeah, ahead, one big thing. I one thing. One big thing I always tell like new drivers that are coming out is like you know like don't try to come out and like you know try to impress everyone being the fastest or like, you know, just like hoping you're like automatically like, you know, top dog. Like that might've happened like in the beginning of the racing series where, you know, a lot of us were just fresh and you kind of like pop in and like, you know, be really good. The big thing that like most of us are looking for is like, even like all the experienced drivers, like we're just happy to have new people out. Literally like we see a new face, like we're excited. Like we don't care like how slow you are, how fast you are. It just matters that, like, you know, you're out with us and, like, you know, we're all having fun. Okay. That's, that's um, I would take a few more questions and we're going to uh, – coming up on the two-hour mark um, like we <laughs> normally do. Um, but I wanted to give uh, – Jimmy Boost wanted to give you guys a shout-out. Say, hey, I know those guys. Oh. And uh, it looks like he's saying a, a big thank you to everything that you do. So um, thanks, uh, Jimmy, for the uh, for the kudos. Yeah. Um, um, a few I'll more see questions. more you this season. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see if he if he commits to putting on a post on it. Say so he's going to uh, go for the upcoming seasons. Um, Justin Eastman said, um, "Approximately, how large are your run groups?" So mm-hmm. on a busy day, twenty to twenty-five uh, cars on track. Um, but lately, that hasn't been the issue. Normally, it's like anywhere from ten to fifteen. Uh, since we've seen a lot of like a massive drop in like driver participation across the board. Um, at least like per event. Um, and the tracks are pretty big. Like most, uh, most of the bigger tracks are about two miles long. Um, so there's a decent amount of gap. And, uh, what a lot of the, what, what speed venture does, our host does is they, they actually pre-grid everyone by time. So, uh, after your first run session, after you've set like a time, your next session out, they will put, they'll order everyone by their time. So all the faster guys will always be up front. Mm. And, uh, you know, all the slower guys will be kind of out of their way. Okay. And that really does help in, you know, track, uh, track traffic and trying to get her on the track without like too much issue. Okay. I want to give a, uh, and then the last one here, well, it's not necessarily a question, but it looked like Charles Park uh, with Power Tricks actually <laughs> in here. Um, he said, seat time is definitely the focus. Driving experience is the key. Driver mod first. And, you know, I, I, I see Charles's Park's, Charles's updates all the time um, oh, through he's Facebook. He's a regular for you guys, else. Right? He's a regular yeah. for the event. But I also love his pictures. He always does a great mm-hmm. job with, uh, with doing the event justice and, uh, and posting stuff up. And, uh, and yeah, yeah. Like he's, a, he's a big hero for the event for you guys. Yeah, so. he's a big supporter. You know, he's, we've known him for many years, so he's definitely a big supporter. And we definitely you know, enjoy having him out. He's been using the series as a, as a proving ground for all his parts. So it's been like mutual benefit. 
Exactly. <laughs> well, Charles yeah. good peeps. So yeah, I'm glad he got to be on with us here tonight. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. I don't see any other questions. I think we'll just kind of move on with that uh, and, and go on from there. But I wanted to ask you guys, did you want to give a shout out to any of uh, any of uh, any teams or any sponsors at this time? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we ended up like coming up with a pretty good list of people that we really, really do want to like, uh, recognize who've supported us throughout the years. Who've been there for the start. Um, so most of the companies, uh, Endless, of course, uh, they've been a big supporter of the series since the start, uh, SBO Parts, Race Technologies, uh, C West, GT.net, um, Charles Park at Power Tricks as well. He's been like a massive supporter in these past few years. Uh, Falka, he's done a lot of, uh, Mario, he's done a lot of, uh, media and, uh, support for us as well. Um, all the drivers, like, uh, you know, the series wouldn't be anything without the drivers. They've helped. They, they're literally the guys that felt like fed new drivers to us. So without them, our series would not have grown the way it has. Um, and obviously a lot of guys from the beginning, Stephen Doherty, he's been a massive catalyst as well with like opening everyone's eyes to self-improvement more so than buying parts. Um, some of the guys in the beginning, uh, Mike True at True Performance, uh, who worked with John in initially starting the series. Uh, Greg Seaman, uh, he definitely put in a lot of work and time early in the series to, with uh, John and Mike to help grow and nourish and you know set the first uh, do the yeah. first set of rules that we had for the series as well. Um, Jesse, uh, all the pictures you see Charles post is Jesse at SoCal Motorsports yeah. West. He's like one of the few printed magazines that he, you know he's he's he self prints. He's been doing a lot of uh, work for us and like all the pictures, most of the pictures that you guys. We're posting on your slide, your slideshow where his picture is. He's a great photographer. He's he's been putting in a lot of work and trying to like uh, spread the word about our series as well. Those are, those are uh, great shots, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love them. Um, some of our longest competitors, uh, Nazar and Malco. They've you know been supporting us since like the beginning of time of Nissan Challenge. Yeah. So and they've been uh, definitely one of our uh, like our part of our core driver uh, group. <laughs> And always willing to spread the word about us, so we definitely want to uh, recognize them. And uh, Jeff Willis now, who uh, has been working with us and trying to get our word out uh, with Z Club of America and helping us uh, have that relationship now with uh, NASA Northeast to try and uh, get our rule book and our our setup out in the East Coast for those guys to run now. So uh, that's that's pretty much the gist so of it. You, so you are a guy. You guys are the future is potentially the east coast series and you guys are not sleeping and you're just gonna be running all over the country <laughs> yeah so uh, you got some big plans in the future so yeah we're, we're trying we definitely uh it's it's gone to the point where like we've crawled out of this hole that was covid and uh <laughs> you know trying to gain traction again because definitely uh covid did take a big hit across the board to anything driving related yeah. <clears throat> with like tracks getting shut down and all that for like a good while. Um, and obviously money becoming a little bit more of a commodity for racing than anything else. So um, we're definitely working towards trying to gain back that traction and build up back from, from that. And, you know, trying to make this a better experience for all the drivers, having more drivers come out and support us and us support them on track as well. Yeah. Oh, one more shout out to Brian Hendricks. He was one of like the core guys back in the days, like, you know, Awesome guy, definitely was like, you know, mentor to a lot of us as well. Like the younger guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, that's that's great, man. I appreciate you. you know, we definitely wanted to give you a chance to. I know there's a lot of people. It takes it takes a village to to get these types of uh, events yeah. and and to to, to go you raise go an around. event child. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, honestly, you guys have done some great stuff with the brand. And, uh, you know, we want to also you. give you guys some kudos, not just because yes, you gave us yes, three yes. t shirts, but, yeah. but uh, in all sincerity, we love what you're doing with the brand. Mm -hmm. And we said this early on. We're just, I don't even care if we ever know these guys. We're just going to commit to supporting them because you're just having such a great time. And yeah. um, it's all. It, it, what you were doing was already encompassing the Nissan community in your area. And we thought you were doing a great job with it, which is why we initially supported you. And then we've grown to be friends and, yeah, and here we are. We'll yeah. continue to support you as you go through your growth and, and uh, prosperity. So, yeah. That's uh, much appreciated. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Definitely appreciate the coverage and all that, you know, to help kind of get us out to 
other people that you know may not know oh, about you're it. Be back. Don't think <laughs> you're just like a one and done. Oh, no, we're yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. we're we're definitely open to coming back. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I usually uh, watch your watch your shows live anyway. So. <laughs> uh, oh man, that's awesome, man. Thank, thanks for that, man. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, Cheers we'll, to a bright future together. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. By the way, did you guys notice that uh, you're in the background here? Miles did some. <laughs> Some face app work. He's a he's a whiz with the Photoshop. There, I took yeah. some vintage Hot Wheel photos of the two of you, and I just kind of made nice. that happen. So uh, he's he's got pictures of you because he's a stalker. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, gonna need to make the the profile private for a bit. Yeah, you oh, yeah. you gonna have to lay low for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go into private chat. <laughs> right, right. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, just yes. a recap for everybody um, for this year. Uh, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, we definitely wanted to just recap, kind of come full circle uh, with with, uh, with with you guys, of course. And uh, for those that are still with us, which is a really good amount. Thanks, guys, for still for hanging with well, us, we, man. We We're doing party really hard. Good. We party pretty. We party hard. hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the 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 Nissan Challenge 2023 season it begins on Saturday, uh, the weekend of February 11th. At Willow Springs International Raceway uh, Streets, uh, according to the website here, uh, there is a total of eight rounds planned so far for this year. That's the great thing about California weather, I assume, because you pretty much have the whole year at your disposal, which is a, much. a beautiful thing. We try to avoid the summer, but yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the peak, the, the, the blistering 95 degrees. No, I'm just trying to <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. We get, We got like... 110, 120 oh, track temps. Oh, it's oh, pretty damn out in the, ze- oh. the desert area. That's true. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah, About yeah. 100 days of 100, bro. So, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> uh, I want to put a, a call to action for for anybody who's interested uh, after listening to this to this uh, chat that we've had with you guys. That uh, We want to encourage for anybody who's interested to, to reach out uh, to, to John and to Edgar uh, with Nissan Challenge. Uh, I am assuming there's still time to register uh, for yeah, Canada you can register February. up until the morning of. Morning yeah. of. Is there a particular site? Do you want to direct them to a particular site? That... Uh, speedventures.com. They're our host. They handle all registration, all the fees and all that. So, uh, yeah, they that'd be the place to go to for any kind of registration. Um, if they want to kind of talk to us, um, we do have our, our driver's lounge on Facebook. Uh, it'd be the Nissan Challenge series uh driver's lounge uh it's a big group all the drivers kind of interact with each other uh share tips uh sell things if needed uh anything to help kind of support each other uh Mm -hmm. any questions that anyone has you know i'll answer john will answer so we're definitely always open to communication um anyone can just directly message me as well uh, if they have any questions with regards to like modifying or whatever. And a call to action on that. I mean, definitely everybody that's listening to the show, um, we want you to go to the Facebook, uh, the Nissan Challenge Series Facebook page, and get on there, like it. You know, just that's all you got to do. Continue to support it and share it. You know, get out there on your forums or your groups or your your private Facebook groups, which there are vast and plentiful. Um, get out there and share it. Let, let's try to get the name out there for the event and make sure that you're doing your part to kind of push that in the Nissan communities and get the knowledge out there and get that brand out there for them. Cause that, that's what we need to do for these type of events. If you want to see these kind of things in your area, it all kind of starts with that. So just make sure you're continuing to support um, that event by going on that page and sharing and liking that. So, yeah, yeah. That's my call uh, to action. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Go ahead. Like any, any questions like anyone has to like, feel free to, like, you know, talk shop with me and Edgar, like anything technical, like, you know, I like to talk about cars and mods and like, you know, kind of things in the works, like, you know, kind of like developing stuff just to make like uh, the cars faster. So definitely that's kind of like my strong point there. Nice. Awesome. Okay. So if anybody has any speed questions, like or modification questions, definitely hit yeah. you up. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. What I'll do here too is that I'll get all of the contact, all of the ways which people can contact you, and I'm going to put them in the show notes. So for anybody who's interested, check out the show notes, and we'll go have those uh, contacts or, or links to to, to find uh, John and, and Edgar. Um, it, Instagram? Do y'all do Instagram at all? Or yeah, we have an Instagram. Uh, Nissan Challenge. Do you? Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll, you know, the, hashtag Nissan Challenge. Is that right? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, got, we don't have anything uh, too, too out there. 
it, we were able to grab that name. <laughs> Me, Sun Challenge. <laughs> no, no underscores, no dashes, no nothing. You stole it straight, yeah. straight out of it, man. You got lucky. Yeah. Thank you, Sun Challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Nissan doesn't come after us. <laughs> yeah. They'll go after us before they go after you. Trust me. So, a cease and desist. We'll let you know it's coming. So don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, we want to say thanks, guys, for for joining us, making the time. Uh, I, I I really really enjoyed honestly this week. I mean, just the, the the number of times that we were able to to get together, man. This has been a lot of fun. I feel like I. It's been really easy to talk to you guys, man. I, again, it, it makes it so easy just talking cars the way we have, you know. Yeah, we've been having yeah. fun prepping everything. It's awesome. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, clothes, no shirts. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you got it. Now, man. So, are you guys? So, I, I'm just gonna say that. By the way, this is a fabulous mm -hmm. fitting shirt, and I just don't yeah. say that just to say it. But it's actually mm -hmm. like you guys did a good, good shirt vendor because normally like it's not itchy or anything. But can yeah. people pick up uh, any of this uh, any of this merch like through a vendor of any sort, like stickers or, or shirts right now? Or so we do have shirts. We do have hoodies. Uh, shirts are like twenty five each. Okay. And uh, hoodies are forty five each. So they just got to contact us, and we'll get it out for them. Nice. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Direct, just contact you guys directly. You can make that happen. Yeah. 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 Or or we'll just make, in the group as well. We'll try to work to make everything easier to like you know access like information. You know, media, etc. So that's you're, the goal. Because you're, you're there, man. You're at that level. You're, you're, oh you're, man, you're, you're yeah. yeah. So we just a couple friends rip, racing at the track, and like here we are. Don't let it go to your head. Don't I, you know? You can't be all. Can't, yeah. Don't get all fancy on us later. Yeah, don't okay. get all Kardashian <laughs> on us later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. I wouldn't think so. But uh, yeah, again, thank you guys for coming on. Uh, we thank again, you. we cannot. Uh, mentioned enough for how thankful we're for having you guys on. And again, uh, for anybody listening, just make sure you continue to support these guys. Um, these are the heart of our community. These are grassroots guys. This is exactly what we need to kind of uh, continue that. Out. Let's wish them the best of success. And uh, again, thank you for coming on with us tonight. So thank you again. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, gonna, thank you. Thank you for having us on. To the green yeah. room until after the show. So get in there. So, <laughs> enjoy some virtual water and virtual snacks. <laughs> Sit, sit tight, man. Yeah, uh, yeah we're going sure. to wrap up here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, again, guys, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this interview that we've had, this chat that we've had. Uh, we definitely look forward to doing more of them uh, with John and with Edgar and also covering the Nissan Challenge uh, throughout this year and upcoming years as well, man. This is uh, – I wish I lived closer, man. I mean, maybe – like I said, just no, we, we'll, <laughs> well, we got to make it to one at least. So uh, well, we'll, we'll be out there in, these guys. this summer, man. We're going to be out there uh, at least to meet them in person 